Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I'm going to show you folks is how we do a color coat. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, sometimes I have a lot of pals who will say, Hey Kirk, you do me a favor, I got this texture that needs to be done. And this is one of those projects. I'm working for a friend of mine. I told him, okay, let me see what you got. And when I come over here, I see this. This is Skip Trial Finish, guys. And what he had is... <laughs> Uh, he bought the house not long ago, but he bought it like this. And somebody did a float finish here and they did a skip trial. There's a lot of areas here where, where there's, uh, the camera may show a little bit differently. Say like this area here. Uh, or let's look at this one here if you could zoom in. This is a skip trial finish. It was done, oh, maybe 60 years ago. This, I guess, happened uh, before he purchased the house. And what they did is, this is a cementitious color finish and they floated it they put it on and then they floated it and then they textured it it has nothing to do with this right here it's so far off that originally he said hey Kirk can you match this texture to this texture and I said I can but you have this on almost every door and window so why do that when we can color coat the entire house so what we're going to do today is, excuse me John we are going to show you some tips um, again notice here too we have the patch right here, <laughs> then they have a patch right here. And the fellows who did this, I'll give them credit for trying, but it's simply the wrong texture. Now, he says, what would you recommend? And I said, well, what I would recommend if it's my house is I'm going to go corner to corner. What we do is we're going to remove all these lights, remove all the downspouts. He'll reinstall them after we're done with the color coat. But what that does is we take it from corner to corner because to just texture here, texture there, and paint it, you're still gonna see some flaws. And I'm pretty good at what I do, but even me, you would see some of my, uh, I can match this much better than this fellow, but even so, it's not beneficial to go that route. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a new color coat, maintenance free finish all over this. And I'll show you one more, or well, a couple more things around here, Tim. Uh, Again, I tell the fella, pay my guys, and uh, I'll come and give you a day. And he says, well, next time you're over, you can kick back in the hot tub and have a view of this area here. And I thought, man, if, if I'm doing this for nothing, you better buy me a bottle of Don Perignon. Actually, I need a whole one just for me and my wife. Anyhow, getting back to what we're doing. Uh, you see this patch here? So I said, I said now... Raj, you're, you got too much patchwork. It's best to go corner to corner. So what we're prepared to do today is we're going to put a bonding agent over the entire house because he was going to paint it. And, um, I told him, well, at least you had it pressure washed. That's a start because you pressure wash it. Then we apply the bonding agent. And lastly, we have this one wall here. Now, again, um, you see the big patch that they did here. The big patch here. I don't know if that camera's showing this, but there is quite the difference between this floated finish and this finish here. And then they, the last window they have here, it's just so bad. I said, man, you're better off going with something different. And I told him, we can do this finish here. This is called the skip trial. Skip trials are very forgiving, very, very forgiving. Meaning you can close your eyes and put a skip on it. It hides all the mistakes. I said, if it's me, I'm going to go with an elegant float finish on my own house. And what that is, is we'll show you what that is. It's you apply the coat and then you float it and that's called a float finish. Uh, we're going to turn this camera off and I'm going to show you a little bit of behind the scenes what you need to know or what we do when we get started with a project such as this. All right guys, I'm going to show you a little bit of behind the scenes stuff, what you need if you're going to do something like this. Well, number one, I got my truck here. There's a big thing that folks, we've done about 400 videos already. And people are always say, hey Kirk, when you put that Weldcrete on, that's a bonding agent so our cementitious finish could adhere. I use Weldcrete and I dilute it half and half when I do color coats and suit. So do the majority of plastering contractors I know. All of them, Davis, Ron Roberts, they all use uh, Weldcrete and they dilute it. But if we're putting Weldcrete, if we're say we're doing um, a skim coat over something then we go full strength and you guys don't have to use what I'm using there's 20 different bonding agents they got separate bonding agents at Lowe's Home Depot's use whatever bonding agents you want but that's what I prefer I've got my big truck here we're gonna need a lot of scaffold we're gonna need the mixer 
And last thing we need is color coat material. Now say, I picked this up from West Coast, West Coast Builders in Oakland. Again, you can get this material anywhere, There's a lot of, lot of different places. But we're gonna mix eight bags to start. We're gonna throw eight of these bags in that mixer when we get to that stage. First thing we gotta do is we're gonna pull those uh, spouts, uh, pull the lights. We're three days earlier, so I promised him, I said, well, he already had his plumber and electrician lined up to pull that stuff. But since we're three days early, another job failed uh, to be, uh, we're getting ready to do another job. Anyhow, we got there, I wasn't ready, so I thought, gee whiz, uh, got, got a lot of guys, why not bring them over here? Anyway, before we show you how to do the, uh, the actual application, we are going to get busy with the prep work. And that's going to take a full crew of us uh, about an hour, hour and a half. When we get ready to apply this, I'll show you how you can do it and I'll show you how it blends in two separate finishes and different textures and gets rid of it all, makes it nice and pretty. So when we get to that stage, an hour and a half too, we'll show it to you. Okay guys, Jay said I should point out something and I agree, this is, this is somewhat, well it's very important guys because I don't want anybody to watch what I do and say, yeah, I'm going to do like Kirk does. One thing you should understand, this is a painted surface. It's sealed. This is a cementitious finish. It's open. I've got to get the suctions the same, meaning I'm putting one coat over this. And by the way, guys, I like to use this well because it's got a color and it. it's blue. Uh, a lot of the white glues, you can't see it. You can see the sheen if you look sideways, but you can't see the color. So that's why I choose this. Plus it works. Anyhow, Getting back to what uh, Jay was pointing out. On here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm hitting all of this painted surface and I'm hitting this surface here about three separate times. I've got to have the suction similar. Otherwise, there's gonna be a color and a tint different on texture. Can there still be? Sure, can be. It's kind of like the windows here. We cover them up and we tape around it. When we pull this tape, can there be some blue under there? Sure. Sure it can be. I'll show you the last little thing, guys. Around, around the bottoms, you say you've got a pressure wash. We're wire brushing anyway. We wire brush the bottoms. Why? Because that's the worst place. Then we apply with a brush, really thick on the bottoms. Um, the idea is if you put it too thick, it will spider check the color coat. And I have had, uh, for instance, uh, several years back, about 10, we're doing a job in Hayward for a fireman. And he said, Kirk, what can I do to help? And I said, well, you could uh, watch. <laughs> Give us some beer. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, he says, well, how about I buy the wellcrete and I put it on myself? And I said, okay, dilute it. I came out and the whole job was super blue. And I said, oh, shit. I said, I can't do this color code. If I do it, it's going to spider check because you, you didn't dilute it. It's so concentrated. And he said, show me what you mean. We did a little patch and I said, do you still want us to do it? It's spider check when you look real close. If, if the bonding age is too thick, it will spider check. Best to have professionals do this, guys. Anyhow, a couple of other quick tips. we got a big hole here. How are we going to fill that? Well, I'm putting this weldcrete in there. I'm putting it here. We are going to mix a batch of fast set stuff and fill that up here, and it's going to bond with this. Last thing I'm going to do is we got a couple indentations here. Well, color coat won't fix that. Color coat simply cosmetic, guys. It means an eighth of an inch over an existing finish. An uh, eighth of an inch is merely cosmetic, meaning it'll fix all this bad stuff and it'll give a color coat maintenance free finish, but it won't cure it. Last thing I want to do is I got my brother Lou on this job and he says, Kirk, take a look at the house next door. What do you see? And I said, I see a swimming pool. He goes, no, dipshit, that's Gabby's old house. It's just to belong to my brother, Gabby. Uh, hey, Gab, if you're watching, Gabriel, your old house, man, we're working right next to it. One of those weird things. And what I do is I'll generally float behind two guys, sometimes three, and they're going to paint after us. What I like to do often is I'll take my, my top and um, let me pound some of this out. I take my top and I float it. I'll sometimes either leave an eighth of an inch because if I go all the way to the eave, I'll get stuck all over those eaves. Okay, and what I'll do is, I'm following these guys. Now earlier, I was talking about the colors. This got two coats. This, you can barely see the sheen or the color. If 
if I was using a white glue, real difficult to, to see what's, what's already done and what's not. What we're planning on doing is, this has got to be thick enough to cover all of the imperfections. That is a very heavy skip trial we're covering. So I can see, because I'm right on the wall, what needs to be done. And my job is to cover that skip trial uh, so it doesn't bleed through. This particular finish is 20, or I'm sorry, this is 1620. 1620 means it's a heavy grit. If I was using 2030 over this, the 2030 could telegraph through because we're going over such a heavy finish. Anyhow, what we're going to do is take this to a certain level, then we're going to drop this scaffold, and we're going to get that joint. Although it's only 75 degrees today, we still don't want a joint. So uh, Jay's going to put that camera down and spread out that joint this joint here and by the time he does that we'll tear the scaffold down and we'll show you where we're at okay guys these guys are leaving me in the dust so i've got to catch up bidding grab my bucket come on down here and this is a hot wall all right what i do is catch these guys excuse me tim what I like to do all the time is clean the tape. Clean the tape because we are going to have to pull this. And when we pull it, if it's clean, it'll, it'll come off clean. Meaning, meaning we pull this tape off. Now to come clean here where it won't leave a bunch of holidays. Now, we're hustling because we're doing a wall in the sun. Coming by, you guys. Coming by, yeah. Tap it off, get my tape area, come up, get my, get my tape, and then these joints, we pull up into the joints. There you go, Jay, last two. Don't fall. A little bit of right here. You give me the spot right here. And now what I got to do, guys, is play catch up to these guys. And a little piece right here to it, though. Here we come. Clean that tape because in a few minutes I'm going to pull this off. And by the way, guys, this color is called Southern Moss. It's uh, the only green that La Habra makes besides custom colors. Okay, looks like I can relax now that I've caught and got caught back up. All right. Trying to keep that joint out, guys. Keep that joint out. Up and float the bottom, back and forth. Get the bent clean. And bring it up. Bring it up to the, to the existing. And this does take practice, guys. If you're watching, you say, oh, I'm gonna do that. Kirk makes it look easy. Kirk's been doing this a lot of years. And Jay and Tim are licensed stucco guys too, so they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so I'm following these guys. I'm doing my float, getting caught up. The idea is we don't want any joints. Uh, when you're doing three, four story walls, you can get joints, but that's the nature of this. We take it and feather up into it. And you look at the wall, you see an area that needs it, just put a little bit more. You got a little bit of time before it hardens up completely. Will this be... Uh, very good. Will this be perfect? It'll be about a, as best as you can get it, guys. I've done about 100 color coats and we're pretty good at what we do. The idea is to get rid of the holidays, number one, to give as, as accurate as color uniformity as we can. Will this look like a painted finish? No way. Because this is a cementitious color coat. 
it is going to be varied in color slightly. It'll be a little bit varied, but that's okay because uh, most folks like that. And what we're doing again is an elegant float finish instead of a skip trial. Now I got nothing against skip trial finishes. I've done a ton of them. And skip trials are easier because they're very forgiving. With uh, this particular finish, Jay, give me a little tap over here, please. Jay, give me a little hair over here. Right here. Just give me a quick skim. Keep in, keep in mind, guys, this is, uh, we're going over quite a few finishes, quite a few heavy textures. And while it's wet, we can do this. This is starting to dry. If I put a, a section in here, it'll be a noticeable holiday. So, again, I'm taking the new into the existing. And you gotta hold this float real light. A lot of things you gotta know. Uh, I've been doing floating now for shit over 25 years. And I've floated behind four guys many, many times and actually find it quite easy. But I know my cements. I can look at a wall and tell when, hey, you can't, you can't float that wall anymore. So, and I just now wet this float. If you wet a float on a color coat cementitious finish, you better know where to put it. Otherwise, you'll have a, a color differential. It's like pouring Clorox on blue jeans. All right, we take it here. Remember where I put this patch, guys? I not only filled it in prior, but then I had to put a bonding agent over that again. Otherwise, we get a color difference there. You take it, blam. I just look at it, get all the holidays out, and there you have it, guys. Uh, we take this window, we're going to pull it, but not yet because these guys are trying to get away from me. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and call it quits. We'll show you the results when we're done with the whole job. All right, guys, we're going to put a conclusion on this. What we've done is we've plastered this little bit under this shiplap siding. We've taken this wall here. If you do this just right, guys, you clean your tape, you pull it once or twice, and you get a clean finish. That's why I always clean my tape on the windows, the doors, him. You clean the tape off, then you pull it, and it won't pull off the existing stucco. There's a lot of stuff that a 20 minute video is not going to explain. It's not going to explain 25 years of experience. Like say, for example, the, the floating, you float the corners this way. If you float them that way, you expose them. Over here, where the dark spots, those are, those are still drying. This is a hot wall, it's about 80, 85 now. It's comfortable. It's all gonna dry about that color right there. That southern moss, it's a bit green. And these folks, said, Kirk, go ahead and do the color coat and then we'll do the painting afterwards. Half of my jobs for 30 years, they've been doing that. Half will do the painting first. If they paint first, we are gonna get some stucco over that. That's just the nature of it. As I was saying earlier, I clean my tape. Why do I clean my tape? I clean the tape so when I pull it off that I don't pull off the color coat finish. We want it to be uh, cured fully before we start messing with that stuff. And again, I'll take you around here and there are some serious finishes here where paint enhances flaws, guys. So this is the way to do it if you have many different variations of textures because no amount of paint was gonna fix this. This is an eighth of an inch thick. It's 50 times to 70 times thicker than any paint they could apply. Here, what we did is the same thing. We, we taped all, the, all of this, pulled the tape off. It pulls a little paint off, that's okay. They're gonna repaint all the eaves and all the trim to match this uh, southern moss. Over here, it's, it's drying up. Uh, we come around here, and we pulled this door here. We've already pulled all of this. We're about, well, we're pulling this right now. And Tim is getting his own holidays that he made earlier. Uh, working with Tim is always a pleasure. I get, he gets more on me than I get on me myself. Oh, this view is just cool. And by the way, guys, these guys I'm working with, they're all quality plasters, especially Tim. He's just as good as me. Anyhow, my name is Kirk, J. 
Jason on the camera. He's helped me spread most of this anyhow. We thank you for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.